let's see. Let's have a look into the future using Power BI and custom visualizations. The Power BI custom visuals gallery, shown here, has some widgets available to use that access libraries built in the R language to perform forecasting. This is the Office Store where you can download custom visuals. I'm going to type forecasting into the search box. In this video, I'll demonstrate two of these, each which uses a different statistical model. First, let's take a look at how to download one of these widgets. Go to the download pages for the custom visuals, and from there, you'll be able to click on the Get It Now link. Since these visuals require the R libraries, you may not have these installed. When you go to install the visual, it will ask you to install all the R libraries, so please do that. Download both of these visuals. Once the downloads are complete, to add the visuals into the custom gallery, Simply click on the ellipsis here, import from file, find the files that you downloaded. I downloaded these two. And for instance, we'll put the ARIMA in here. Next, I'll add the second widget, which is the STS forecasting widget. And now you see I've got them both added to my visuals gallery. A very important point to remember here is that when you install these new widgets, you may get pop-ups that say you need to install the R language libraries. You must install these libraries. If they do not get installed correctly, then these visuals will not function. So I have created a view with the Northwind database, first introduced with Microsoft Access, but you can also download it for SQL Server. I've created a rolling total of sales by category, which means that each day adds all the prior days to the total. So if I earn $5 one week and 10 in the next, my rolling total will be 15. So let's go into Power BI and connect to my view. So I'll enter server and my database and I'll click OK. I'm using my local server, so I can just use my own existing credentials. I will select my view and then I'll click load. I'm going to start by adding an Arima visual to the report canvas. Here you see the dialog for enabling script visuals. Agree to it. You only need two pieces of data for this visual, a date and a value. In the top left, you'll see the wheel spinning to let you know that the calculations are being performed. Okay, so at this point the chart is useless because I have all my categories here and each of them has a different rolling total which makes for this real jagged looking trend line. So what I need to do is to allow only one category to be selected. I'll drag category down into the filters environment, set it so that you can only have a single select and pick a category. 
you should see the wheel start to spin again in the top left. Now we have a slope that shows our actual sales for beverages, plus tagged on to the end are some forecasts. To zoom in, drag a box around a section of the chart. The blue line shows the actuals, while the orange line shows the predicted trend. We'll get into more details about how that predicted trend works momentarily. You might notice that our prediction is only 10 days long, and perhaps we want to know further out into the future what to expect. So in the settings here, you can change that to what, however many days you want to predict out. In this case, I'm going to choose 90. The wheel in the top left is spinning again. So now I have a 90-day forecast. Let's have a closer look. You can see the actuals versus the projections. We'll talk more about these in a moment. In the top right, at the very far right, you can toggle spike lines by clicking the icon. There's something wrong with my graphics today because the spike line icon isn't showing up, but here's the results of what happens when you choose it. So now you can hover over certain parts of the chart and you can tell what exactly is the yellow line representing and what are the edges representing of the darker gray and the lighter gray lines. Notice that the edges of each colored zone represent the upper and lower limits of those zones. The orange line represents the mean. Let's add another tab and try the other visual. Again, add the date and the value. And again, add a filter. Once again, the wheel in the top left is spinning away. This one also is defaulting to 10 days of forecasting, so let's go in and change that again to 90 days of forecasting. The wheel is spinning. And now we have a 90-day forecast. Let's have a closer look. Turn on the spike lines for ease of use. In this visual, the orange line represents the actuals and the red line represents the mean between the two forecasts. Let's talk a bit more about the gray areas that represent the forecast. You'll notice that for each of those areas there's a confidence level. The dark gray has a confidence level of 80 percent, while the darker gray has a confidence level of 80 percent. Again, the red line down the middle is the mean. So here's another look at the data. And what I'm going to do is essentially m mimic the filter that I added inside of Power BI by filtering down on the category of beverages. So this is really the data that the forecast is using for its rolling total. If you're interested in the differences between the statistical models that were used by these two visuals, there's a lot of information out there that can explain to you what the differences are and what the pros and cons of each model are. Your feedback is critical, so please subscribe and leave comments and get to know us.